Hi, it's Sherry. So today we're going to be creating this necklace and you can see how long it is. I'm going to show you how to attach all this wire swirls onto this necklace to create this. And then I'm going to also show you step by step how to do these earrings. So let's get started on that. Okay guys, so to start out, you are going to need your black clay. This is black primo clay. I have it rolled out on my thickest setting. And then you are going to want to make a skinnier blend. So to make this, I took blue, a yellow, an orange, and a red. And then I ran it through my pasta machine. So basically to do that, you are just going to take your clay. You're going to make one side skinny okay kind of like a teardrop and then you're going to take another one do the same exact thing okay and then you're going to put them together like this and then you would have you know your two other colors and then you're going to run them through the pasta machine so i'm going to do that quick with these And then you're going to fold it over and continue running it through your pasta machine. Okay, so this is what you'll end up with. And you just keep going and going and going until you get the results that you want. Okay, so remember you're going to fold it over and then this part always goes into the pasta machine first. All right. So once you get your skinnier blend, you are going to roll it out on your thinnest setting. I did this ahead of time because what you are going to need to do is, let me get this up. Once you roll it out on your thinnest setting, you are going to want to make sure that you put it between two pieces of paper and then you're going to burnish it. So burnishing is when you get another piece of paper and you rub it like that and then you're going to run that through your pasta machine once and then you're going to let it set for 12 to 24 hours. I actually did this one a few days ago because I got busy so I couldn't <clears throat> finish the project. So my next step is I'm going to take my piece off. You know what? The easiest way is just to do it like that. Okay. <clears throat> Rub it on. And then carefully lift it. Okay. So what we want to do is actually get this crackle effect. So I'm just going to make sure this is on well. Okay. And now... I'm just going to cut the black off here. Okay. Oop, that didn't cut all the way through. Okay. Now I'm going to run this through my pasta machine. So I am actually going to take this and this is on my thickest setting. So I'm going to go down one and then it'll be on my second thickest setting. So when I put it through the pasta machine, I'm actually going to put it this way, going down that way. Okay, and you can see how it started to crack, okay? So if you want to keep it like that, you could just pull it to make more cracks in here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to rub this one more time. Okay. And I'm going to go down one more so I get a little bit more cracks. 
Okay. So I really like the way that the cracks are on this one. So I'm actually just going to pull and try to get a few more cracks on this red. Not gonna work, there we go. So just be gentle when you're pulling. Okay. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to burnish it one more time. And I do like the cracks going across. So I'm actually going to run this through one more time just to see if I could get a few more cracks going this direction. Okay, well, I didn't get cracks in that direction, but it gave me a few more cracks. So I'm... Um, happy with how it looks. Okay, so I'm going to get my paper. I'm rubbing this pretty hard because I want to make sure that all my cracks are gonna kind of be sealed. So I'm really happy with the way that looks. Oh, sorry, let me readjust this, I must have bumped it. Okay, so my next step is I'm gonna pick out my cutters. And what I chose was, I like this cutter in general. I just wanted something a little different. And then I'm going to use my circle. Now I'm going to get my saran wrap. And you could really choose any cutter to do this. And I also want to, besides making my earrings, I want to be able to make a necklace. Okay, so to do my necklace, I'm actually going to use a bunch of different weird shaped ovals. Okay, so these are all my cutters that I have that are different shapes. They're just really kind of like misshapen ovals. So I'm going to take a bunch of these and I'm just going to cut out a bunch of those to make a necklace and a pair of earrings. So, and I'm going to make sure that I get different colors. So the first thing I want to do is decide which ones I want to be my earrings and which ones I want to be um my necklace charms or my necklace pieces and then what color am i going to decide for the earrings so i want to do my earrings first so i know that they are going to be exact color and i think i'm going to stick with this one for the earrings so for that i think i'm going to go a little red and orange and then I'm going to do some of the blue. So first we'll start out making sure that we get our red and orange. Okay. And then we want to get our blue and yellowish green all together. And I am putting them upside down because I want them to be different. Okay. Oops. So those will be the earrings. 
and then I'm going to punch out some of the blue for the tops of the earrings and then some of the red and I want to make sure that I'm getting this crackle look because I think it's really neat looking okay so now I have my earring part so now I'm going to take some more of these shapes and I'm just going to start cutting out a bunch of different ones to get my necklace pieces okay so that is all my pieces that I need to cut. Oops. Now carefully get your paper again and we are going to reuse whatever's left over another time. So we want to make sure that we're keeping any of our scrap. Oops. All right, so put that off to the side for right now. All right, <clears throat> so I just kind of want to smooth these out just a tad bit for right now and then set them off to the side. I feel like we may not have enough blue for the necklace. So I'm actually going to take my piece again. I'm going to put my saran wrap over it. And I'm going to cut out a few more blue pieces. Okay, oops. Let's get some smaller ones. Okay, so now let's reset this off to the side. And then my next step is going to be rolling out some more black clay because I need to do the back of my earrings so I'm going to take my clay and I roll it out on the third thickest setting so to start out with the earrings I have my black primo clay and now I'm just going to lay my earrings down on them Going to get my cutter again, and I'm also going to get my saran wrap. And I want to, oops, now cut this out with my black primo clay underneath. Because I kind of want that little dome, and that's why I'm doing this. So just line them up and then re slice them out. Okay. Move that out of the way. And now. <clears throat> What I'm going to do is I want to put swirls on these. So, and when I say swirls, I want to take my wire and make just little swirls, okay? So to do that, you are going to get your wire. Just cut a piece off and then you're going to get these type of pliers, okay? 
and you're going to get the very edge and you're just going to turn it and you'll see how it has like a little eye hook and you're just going to keep going in and turn again okay now once it gets to this point i just hold it and then i take my wire and i kind of turn it like that okay so i'm just rolling my wire all right that's about as big as i want and then i'm going to take these pliers hold them because it'll flatten it and then i'm just going to press down straight okay and then i'm going to straighten this out so i have a nice straight wire with now my little spiral okay so i did a bunch of those ahead of time i'm now just going to clean these up and i want to try to make sure that everything is smoothed out and blended nicely okay just keep blending it so everything is nice and smooth all right Now, normally you can just take this, poke it through, but I want to try something a little different. Um, you could also, there's a number of different ways you could do it. You could take your little hole puncher is what I call them and put your hole in, bake them and then put them in like that. But I wanted to try something just a little bit different and I did these ones. So basically I took this, I did exactly what I showed you and then I took this and I went over and I bent it down. Okay. And then I just did it on this side exactly the same thing oops that I did before so I just took it and I turned it oops I'm stuck there we go and I just kept turning it over until I got two spirals on each side okay so in order to do that I was thinking that I might be able to put my little eye hole there or my little hole puncher and I just want to kind of slice it open just a little bit and then I'm thinking if I just take this and slip that down into the hole okay push that down and then we could just reseal that and then I have a spiral on each side so I'm going to take this and I just want to blend these together a little bit better okay and then i'm just going to kind of go in this little hole that was already created to put that in and i'm just going to make it a little bigger just a tad bit so this way after it bakes i could get my next hoop in there that i want to get in there because i want to take another wire and connect it so i'm going to go through that oops hold on what i'll do is i'll take this on the top and i'm going to connect this piece come on get in there and this piece together like that so i want to see if i could do that but i want to bake this first and i need to make sure 
that this piece is going to be thick enough and hold up because you don't want it to break. And I think that that should be thick enough. So my next step is going to be to put this down on here and I want to texture the back. Okay, and then I'm just going to get a piece of paper and I'm going to kind of burnish it on the sponge to get off whatever fingerprints that I just put on there. Okay, so now I'm going to just put this off to the side. You can see we got this cool texture on the back and we got the fingerprints off the front. So just put that off to the side for the time being. And now we're gonna do the same thing to this one. So smooth out your sides. And now, so I got the um, oranges, orange color up on top. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Just lay that flat a bit. And I'm going to put my hole in here. And then once again, just carefully slice it down, open it up a bit. And then I'm going to take oops, my bigger spiral and I'm going to put that. Okay. Carefully push that down. All right, and then we're going to reseal that. Okay, now remember, you're gonna to wanna to redo that hole just big enough that you could get another piece in there then, okay? Now just take it and mark up your spot, your um, piece, and then you get your paper and just rub off, <clears throat> sorry, just rub off any fingerprints that you may have gotten on there. So there, so the back looks really good. And I'm just going to do a tiny little open in here. Make sure that's good. Okay. And I forgot that I have to do the circle, so I'm going to get my saran wrap again. Oops, sorry. Get all your little pieces up here. All right, and then I'm going to Take my little hole puncher and I'm going to do one on the top and one on the bottom. All right. I'm going to take this and just smooth out my edges. Make sure everything is smoothed out good. And now I'm going to take my sponge and I'm just going to mush this. There we go. And I put that all to the side. Do the same thing with each one. Make sure the sides are good. This one's sealed up beautifully already. Okay. Now we're going to do the other set of earrings quick. And these ones, I'm going to do the way I originally do them. Just to show you the difference since I'm trying to do this different for um, the first time. So let me clean this up. Okay. 
Now I'm just going to take my hole puncher and I'm just going to punch holes in here. Okay. And I am going to take these and I'm going to put them in my toaster oven for um, 45 minutes at 275, the recommended temperature for Primo. And when they are done, we'll finish the rest. So let me throw these in and then we'll start working on the necklace piece. <clears throat> okay, so my earrings are in the oven right now. And what I did was I actually got the Filmo leather effect clay and I'm actually going to use that for my necklaces. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to put all my pieces on the black clay. All right. And then get your saran wrap. Okay. Just kind of lay that down on there. And now... The fun part is going to be trying to match up <laughs> all my cutters that I used. I probably should not have used all different shapes and sizes. <laughs> so, let's see if we could figure out this little puzzle. So this one, yep, that goes there. Oh, and I rolled out my Filmo clay to the third thickest setting. I don't remember if I told you that or not. Yet or not. Uh, is that the right one? Yep. And yes. Okay, guys. Finally got them all. All right. <clears throat> so once again, I'm going to put all my cutters. Oh, I forgot one. I forgot that one. that time we are definitely finished okay so I'm gonna lift these up make sure all my pieces are sealed together the reason I like using the saran wrap when I recut is that most of the time and I say 90% of the time my pieces as I cut them will mush down into each other and it saves a lot of time on blending okay so just take your time make sure everything is blended nicely together that your pieces are completely bonded and sealed because you don't want to go through all this to bake it and find out that it's going to be cracked and then it's not going to be any good Okay, so now that those sides are all smooth, I'm just going to wipe my area down. Then I am going to get my little silicone mat and I want to kind of get a general idea how I want to place my necklace together. So. I have to decide, do I want to make them go this way, this way? Do I want to go small and big and, you know, like I, I got to try to figure out how exactly I want to lay this piece out. So while your earrings are getting ready or finishing up and in the oven, Take this time to figure out how you want your necklace. Okay, so now that I have it lined up from dark red, kind of going off to the yellow and then into the blue, um, I'm going to take my hole punchers and I'm actually going to punch the holes into the sides of how I feel that it's going to lay. 
I'm going to get a smaller hole puncher. So I got that size and I'm actually going to clean it. So to clean it, I just have an old wire from a necklace and then I just kind of push the wire through to get all that old clay out. Okay. So let's just start putting holes onto the sides here where our pieces should connect together. And the reason I line them up like this is so I kind of have a general idea how and where the holes should go. Okay, so now I'm going to take my pieces and I'm just going to lay them on my silicone mat and I'm going to kind of put them right as I have them now. Um, actually, first, before I do that, get your sponge and then let's mark our pieces, the backs up. We want to make sure... I'm just going to flip these upside down. And I'm lightly tapping these just to give it a little bit more texture on the back. And then I'm going to line them up exactly how I have them. So I remember how I want them when I take them out and want to connect them together. Okay, so now I know all my pieces are going to kind of line up nicely. This is how I want them. And I'm just going to take paper and I'm just going to kind of rub the top to make sure no fingerprints are on them. And you don't do this hard, just lightly burnish it just to kind of get any marks off from handling them. Make sure everything looks good. All right, now you're gonna put these in the oven at 275 and I'm gonna bake these for 45 minutes to an hour. And then when those are completely done, we'll come back and we will assemble everything. All right guys, so now my all my pieces, the necklace pieces and the earrings are completely cooled off they're baked they're ready to go so we're actually going to start with the necklace first and as you can see this is going to be a fairly long necklace and i decided that i want to incorporate these spirals into the necklace so <clears throat> i was playing around and what i decided to do is just attach them and those will become my links for the necklace and hopefully that will work out nice. Then I was trying to decide if I wanted to add some gold or black ones. And I think I may go with just the silver. Only because I think the silver really kind of pops more. Um, I don't... Like, I feel like the, the gold isn't going to be as vibrant so i'm not going to uv light these or put the resin on i'm just going to kind of leave them just the way that they are so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to make some of these spirals and i have a few made already so i'm just going to show you how i did that i mean i'm going to do some large ones some small ones i'm going to do different sizes so the first thing that you do is you make the spiral which is fairly simple so let me get here's my wire i'm just going to cut a piece of this off and 
And then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to spin. And I'm going to keep doing that. Oops, sorry. Until I get the desired size that I want. Okay. Then I'm going to take these pliers here and I'm going to clamp that completely and just bend it down because I want that to be straight. So I want to make sure that it's nice and tight on there. Put it through. And now I need to take this and bend up, okay? So I want to take it and just bend it completely up. So that's nice and flat. Now I know this piece gotta go on, but this has to be moved this way. So this wire is pretty flexible. So I'm just going to move it in the direction that I want it. And I have a general idea. And now I'm going to take this and bend it like that. So that way I know it's going to lay properly. So then you take it and now it's going to lay properly on there. So my next step is going to be to make more of the spiral. I'm going to take, oops, it's a little harder when you're, when it's not closer to you. Come on, let me get my other ones. Get these flat ones better. Okay, now I can't go any further, so I'm going to take it and I'm just going to bend this up like that. And then I'm going to take my flat pliers here and I'm going to squeeze to have it lay a little bit better. So I'm going to do that throughout the whole thing. I'm going to make it more flat. There we go. There we go. Much better. So now I'm going to do that with all my pieces and I'm going to attach them all that way. So I'm going to pause the video while I do that and while you guys work on yours. And then when I'm finished, I will come back and show you the results. Okay, guys. So I got all my 
little swirls put onto my necklace pieces and I think it came out really cool. So this is what mine looks like. And what I'm gonna do next is I cut a piece of chain because this is gonna be long enough that we could put it right over our head. We do not need any clasp or anything like that. So I have two smaller swirls that I did. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in here and then I'm going to push it straight up and then I'm going to take my tool and I'm just going to, wait, hold on, sorry, bend it that way, okay? And then we're just going to swirl it around until we get a little hook like that, okay? So bend straight up, bend it over, and then get your little so you have your little loop okay so that's how we're going to do that i actually want to make this one a little bit smaller i don't like how much longer that one is so i am going to cut that off straighten it out again Bend it over. And there. That's the way I like it. Okay. So now we could just attach the chain. We could either put another um, jump ring on here or we could just use what we just made. So I'm just going to use what we just made. Okay, I'm going to open this up, put my chain on there, oops, there we go, okay, and now we have this beautiful necklace, I think it's really neat looking. And we're going to put that off to the side for right now, and we are going to finish our earrings quickly. So I did this one ahead of time, um, started it. I just kind of put the little jump ring on to show you. But what we are going to do is two different kinds. So I'm going to get my jump rings. And then you're going to get your earring hooks. So I'm going to open up the jump ring. And I'm just going to finish this one off quickly. And we need a tiny... Jump ring. Let's close that up. And we're going to want to make sure that they are even. There we go. Spin it to the back. And we have our tiny little jump ring here. Make sure that your hook 
that goes into your ear is facing the back because that will make sure that will ensure you that your earring will go on properly. This is not open all the way. There we go. Ugh. Come on. All right, well, I'm going to show you a trick. If your smaller jump rings are giving you trouble like this one is giving me. Oh, my hands are not working today. I'm so sorry. Okay, let me reclose that all the way. All right, what you can do. is take your hook here and just open that up. And then put that on. Okay. Put my little ball there and close it. There you go. And I did the backwards. <laughs> Yay, yay. Okay, let's do it this way. Come on, there we go. All right, that time I actually got it. So, jump ring, slip that in. Okay, and I'm going to push that to the back. Get that in there. my small jump ring make sure that's closed all the way okay get your hook There we go. So that's one style of the earrings. I think they're adorable. It has the little swirl on the back as well. Um, but these ones I want to do slightly different. So that we need to get our wire out again. Okay. Okay, so now our next step is going to make some swirls again. For the bottom half, I want them to be a little big, not too big. Okay, so about that size I'm going to have for the bottom. Okay, and then the top part I'm going to add a couple of small ones. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to first bend this. Okay. 
okay this way it's straight there put that in like that and then we're going to put that straight up and then we're going to get our pliers and we are going to bend again and we're going to make sure that these fit properly because I don't want the see that space is too big so I know I need to readjust this so let's get a smaller bend in there all right that's much better all right so now <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing I did with the necklace and I am going to make a swirl I'm going to take that and I just want to try to tighten it up as much as I can. There we go. Then I'm going to go underneath best that I can. And then bend this because this is super tight. So there we go. So now we know that those two pieces are attached. Then we're going to take our next one again, our smaller one, bend that straight, put that on the top, lift up, and then we're going to just turn it this way. We could get rid of some of this because I don't want it that long. And now I'm going to make a loop for my earpiece to go on. Keep it open a little bit. I got my small jump ring. I just want to make sure it's closed all the way. Okay, I'm going to put this jump ring on here, and then I'm going to reclose my piece here, and I'm going to get my earring hook, bend that just a little bit to open it. Slide it on. And then, well, let me get a better pair of pliers here to close it. Let me close it all the way. There we go. And there. <clears throat> so let's do this one again real fast. All right, guys, so here is our gorgeous set of earrings and a necklace, and I think this came out fantastic. I'm really happy with the results, and I hope you guys are as well, and I will see you guys next time. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!